Thank you for worshiping with us at Jackson Chapel Sammy Church, located at 418 Water Street in Cortland, Alabama, where our pastor is Reverend David T. Young Sr. Please join our service already in progress.
think I need to ask one more time. How many of you know he's been here? Oh, yeah.
and those we've done unknowingly. For those we've done by thought, by word or by deed, we ask, Father, that you forgive us. Oh, Father, we know that we don't deserve the blessing that you have bestowed upon us. Because you keep on doing. And we keep on wrongdoing. But we ask, Father, now that you would just fix us up. Clean us up and restore unto us the joy of your salvation. Oh, Father, we need you right now. Because somebody here today, Father, their body is wrecked in pain. But we know you are a healer. So we ask, Father, that you would just move on their behalf. Father, we know that there's someone here today that's going through trial and tribulation. At home or on their job. But Father, we know that you are able. And that you can do anything but fail. So we're just passing it to you right now. Father, we ask that you would just take it now. And whatever you see we need. We ask that you supply Oh, Father, we pray now for the bereaved families. Comfort them as they go through these difficult times. Oh, Father, we pray for those that are lying on their beds of affliction. Oh, Father, move. And let them know, Father, that all sickness is not unto death. But, Father, we know that whatever your will, it shall be done. Yes. Now, Father, we pray for every family that's represented in this place today. Yes. Father, bless now. Yes. Bless, bless, and bless. Yes. And Father, whatever we do here today, yes. we pray, Father, that it will be pleasing in your sight. Yes. Bless this choir now. As they sing songs of Zion. Oh, Father, just touch them right now. And then bless this congregation. That we may worship you. That we may lift you up. And that after everything is said and done, you alone shall receive the glory, the honor, and the praise. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 And
mighty, mighty long way. Amen. Amen. At this time, we will have our scripture reading from 2 Kings. Chapter 19, beginning at the 14th verse. Second Kings chapter 19, beginning at verse number 14. When you have found this, please acknowledge it by saying amen. amen. And the scripture reads as follows. And Hezekiah received the letter of the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up into the house of the Lord and spread it before the Lord. And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwellest between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone. Of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. Lord, bow down thine ear and hear. Open, Lord, thine eyes and see. And hear the words of Sennacherib which has sent him to reproach the living God. Of a truth, Lord, the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations and their lands and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore, they have destroyed them. Now, therefore, Lord, our God, I beseech thee, Save thou us out of his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. This is God's word for God's people. And the people of God said, Amen. 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 At this time, we're going to prepare to lift our offering as we prepare our hearts and our minds for giving. The Bible says to let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. For remember the Lord loves a cheerful giver. For the Bible reminds us that it's more blessed to give than to receive. So the usher will come now and we will lift our arms.
for this offering that has been lifted. We ask, Father, that you would bless those that gave and bless those that didn't have it to give. We pray, God, now that you would take it and make it what you would have it to be. And, Father, we pray now that all these gifts we know come from you. So we give them back to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.
power. honor to his Holy Spirit that guides us and sustains us. For there is power Somebody here realizes the power. I hope somebody here realizes that nothing happened by <coughs> happenstance or is not coincidental. But I read somewhere around the eighth chapter of Romans. And if you look behind me, I believe it's the 28th verse where it says, for we know that all things work together for the good. Yes, sir. For those who love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. Yes, I want you uh, if you would, for just a few moments, from the 20th chapter of 2 Kings. 2 Kings chapter number 20. And after I read this, you will understand what I meant. When I say that all things work together. And the scripture reads, beginning at verse number one, and we will read through verse seven. In those days, Hezekiah sick unto death. And the prophet Isaiah, the son of Amos, came to him and said unto him, 
Thus said the Lord, set thy house in order, for thou shalt die and not live. Then he turned his face to the wall and prayed unto the Lord, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord, remember now how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. And it came to pass, before Isaiah was gone out into the middle court, that the word of the Lord came to him, saying, Turn again and tell Hezekiah, the captain of my people. Thus said the Lord, the God of David, thy father, I have heard thy prayer. I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will heal thee. On the third day thou shalt go up unto the house of the Lord. And I will add unto thy days fifteen years. And I will deliver thee in this city out of the hand of the king of Assyria. And I will defend the city for my own sake and for my servant David's sake. And Isaiah said, take a lump of feed. And they took and laid it on the boil, and he recovered. May God have a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. For the edifying of our souls. And all of God's people said, Amen. 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 Let us pray. Now God, have your way. Give us a word that it may touch our hearts. That we may look and see that it's time for us to be better. Give us a word that will challenge our minds. And that will change our hearts. And that we will walk in your holy ways. That the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. For you, Lord, are our strength. And you are our redeemer. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. amen. and amen. amen. From the initial verse, if we could use for a thought for just a few moments, we will use Set your house in order. Amen. Set your house in order. <coughs> As we look back, we find Hezekiah praying a prayer in the 19th chapter and the 14th through the 19th verse. And what had happened, Hezekiah had received a letter from a messenger. And it concerned him to the point where he took it and he spread it out before the Lord. And the Bible says that he prayed on behalf of Israel and in his prayer, he was praying that God would deliver them from the hand of the king of Assyria. 
Hezekiah was worried because he realized that there was nothing that he could do. But he was relieved to know that he served a God that was able to deliver. So he asked God to deliver them out of the hands of the king. And look at what God says, and, and, and I want us to understand something because this is the beginning or the prelude to our text. He said there should be a sign that each year that such things grow themselves. In the second year, that we spring is the same. And in the third year, you sow and reap and plant vineyards and eat the fruit thereof. And the, and the remnant that is escaped of the house of Judah shall yet again take root downward and bear fruit upward. But then he said, for out of Jerusalem shall go forth the remnant. And they that escape out of Mount Zion, the zeal of the Lord of hosts shall do this. Therefore, says the Lord, concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow, nor come before it with a shield, nor cast a bank against it. But I like this part. He says, but by the same way he came, the same way he's going to go back. And God said, he shall not come into this city. He told Hezekiah, he said, I will defend the city. Now, this is the prayer that, that, that Hezekiah uh, was looking for an answer to because he was concerned about his people. The Bible says that the king, Sennacherib, not only did he not make it to the city, but when he got back, <laughs> and returned to dwell in Nineveh, it said he was worshiping his God. And his sons came in and killed him. So now, Hezekiah faced another dilemma. God had delivered him from the hands of the Syrians. But now Hezekiah is sick. The Bible says he was so sick that he was about to die. And if, I, if I'm not mistaken, and, and y'all Bible scholars can help me, but <laughs> Hezekiah was 39 years old mm -hmm. and was about to die. So what was wrong with this particular picture? Well, I think if you remember, we've been studying through in Sunday school that the lineage should come through Judah. Am I right? Amen. And Hezekiah was part of this lineage through Judah. But there was one problem. Hezekiah didn't have no children. Oh, I wish I had somebody. And because he didn't have any children, this kind of put a kind of dampen on the idea of the lineage continuing for Jesus to come on the scene. But Hezekiah prayed to God. He said, now look at me. And I want y'all to hear this because I know many of us have been in this same position. He prayed to God and said, now Lord, you know I, I've been a good Christian. 
You you know my works. You know I, I've tried to do everything that you told me. I've tried to keep your statutes, and now hit my body. And here I am. I'm sick, and I'm about to die. God, I ain't ready to die. I need, I need something from you. He, he, he declared to God. And, and what I'm trying to get us to understand is that when we go through, there's something that we don't want to hear. The Bible says Isaiah came to Hezekiah and told him, said, man, you, you finna kick the bucket. There, there, you, you just don't know that, 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 that there's something about to happen to you, but unless you set your house in order. All right. All right. No doubt when the prophet came, uh, Isaiah got there and Hezekiah thought maybe he would get some good news. He thought maybe, you know, Isaiah was gonna come tell him, man, you've been going to Bible study, you all right. You've been going to you've been going to uh, uh, Sunday school, you all right, you you serve on the board, you 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 doing good, son, but but his house wasn't in order. All right. But what I found when I looked at this, and, and when he heard the words of, of Isaiah, the Bible says that, that he turned his face to the wall and began to pray, saying, I beseech thee, O Lord. I'm calling on you. You know that I walk before you in truth with a perfect heart and have done that which is good in thy sight. And he started to cry and he wept and, and he was concerned. And Isaiah left, but it said that it came to pass after Isaiah was gone, he out into the middle of the court that the word came to Isaiah, turn again and tell Hezekiah. That thus said the Lord. I have heard your prayer. Oh, I wish I had somebody. See, somebody missed that. It went right over your head. Yeah. I have heard your prayer. I know what you've been going through. I know what your body feels like. I know what kind of troubles you got. I know how your children been acting. I know how your spouse been acting. But I have heard your prayer. I've seen the tears. All right. And I'm going to heal you. And look at what God says. I'm going to add 15 years yeah. to your life. Right. He went from dying to having 15 years added to his life. <laughs> Have you ever wondered why God keeps adding time to your life? <laughs> well, I, I believe that he, he's trying to Give us time, Randy, to get our house in order. I wish I had somebody. Every day that God gives us is a new opportunity. Every day that God gives us is a new chance. And somebody asked a question in Sunday school this morning. Is this how we repay God? Lord have mercy. All right. Have you ever just stopped to think? We used to sing a song a long time ago. How much do I All right. owe him? All right. yeah. Yeah. And somebody would say, you know what he did? All right. And somebody else would say, he died just <laughs> for me. All right. So, why do we act like we don't owe him anything? Why do we act like it's such a difficult thing 
to give God the praises he so richly deserves. Why do we act like everything that we have is because of ourselves? Yes, yes. The Bible says that every good and perfect gift comes from above. Fifteen years. Just because he asked. Just because he cleaned up what he messed up. God gave him that opportunity. And Manasseh was born. The Bible says that, now, now, now look, at, look at what happened now. After Manasseh was born, Hezekiah lived 12 more years. You don't believe me? How old was Manasseh when he took over the throne? He was 12 years old. And Hezekiah died. Because in order for Manasseh to take over the throne at 12 years old, Hezekiah had to die. Is that right? So God answered his prayer. And understand that God will do the same for you. Look in that 34 number song that I started off service with this morning. It wasn't by chance. But look at this psalm of David. He said, I was blessed the Lord at all times. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. All right. Now I got to stop at this verse for a minute. And I'm, I'm, and I'm almost done. All right. But I need to stop at that verse for a minute. Because if we look at the the concept, we look at the depth of what this actually means. We have to understand that David, I will bless the Lord at all times. Not just when I feel like it. Not just when somebody tells me to. Not just, I wish I had somebody. But at all times. And then he says that his praises shall continually be in my mouth. And what that tells me is that if his praises are continually in my mouth, All right. then it will be very difficult yeah. for me to talk about somebody. Right. It will be very difficult for me to cuss somebody. I wish I had somebody. It will be very difficult for me to say the wrong thing. If I'm praising God, they ain't got time to complain. Yeah. Yeah. He said, my soul shall make boast in the Lord, the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. You know when you start to praise in God, there are some other folk that will start praising God as well. Yeah. But when you can tell somebody how good God has been yeah. to you, yeah. it'll catch on. Mm -hmm. let, me, let me help you. Let me help you. I'm about done. Uh, the songwriter put it this way. I am a living. See there? I told y'all be paying attention. I am a living testimony. I could have been. Hey. We're going to be all right in a minute. All right. But my soul shall make boast in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I gotta do this. All right. I gotta do this. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Y'all just passed the test. But I said, praise the Lord. I didn't say for somebody to repeat what I said. Y'all learned that in the Bible study. Because when somebody say praise the Lord, it ain't for you to say praise the Lord behind them. All 
is for you to give God praise. I wish I had somebody. I'm about, I'm about to get through with y'all. But what I want us to know is that we got to set our house in order and just stop doing things to be doing them. It is very important. <coughs> David said, I sought the Lord. And he heard my cry. And delivered me from all of my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. For you telling me, David, is that you are not to be ashamed to give God praise. Because when your house is out of order. You're not going to want to give God praise. But when you're putting your house in order, the Bible says that everything that has breath praise the Lord. Hezekiah got those 15 extra years. And I stopped by to tell you, down here at the chapel, God has given us some extra time. Every time where our eyes come open, every time uh, we can put one foot in front of the other, every time we're able to turn the key and get in our car, and roll a little bit. Yeah. We ought to be trying to go to worship because God has been good to us. Yeah. And as, as I said this morning in my prayer, matter of fact, he's been better to us than we've been to ourselves. And uh, I want us to know today now as I get ready to take it home, uh, we need to set our house in order now. Ain't God all right now? Too many times uh, we are so happy now because we do a little bit of something. Uh, want somebody uh, to pat us on the back? Uh, let me tell you something. Uh, if God uh, would stop giving you uh, a blessing every day, uh, where would you be right now? Uh, ain't God all right? Way too long, I've been skipping, praying to God, way too 
days. He will restore to you. If you just set your house in order. We got a plan. We got a plan. But let me tell you something about plans. If the Lord don't build a house, <laughs> Lord have mercy. If the Lord don't build a house, then the building is in vain. In other words, you got to set some order. You got to set some order. Because God will do everything that he said. The Bible says he's not a man. That he should lie. And I look. And I see that we're able But the question is, are we willing? Because when Hezekiah, Hezekiah got that letter, his whole mindset changed. When he got that letter, he knew it was time to pray. And then when he fell sick, Nobody but you, Lord. I know you're able. But I like that. And if you don't remember nothing else, remember what he said, what God said to him. He said, I've heard your prayer. I've seen your tears. I know what you've been going through. But guess what? I'm going to heal you. Give God a hand clap of praise. I'm going to heal you. Because I can fix what's been broken. And when I fix it, can't nobody break it down. He said, I can open doors that no man can shut. And he said, I can shut doors that no man can open. The doors of the church are open. The doors of the church are open. The invitation is given. There may be someone here today that's ready to set your house in order. You know the Lord has been good to you. ready to make that choice that was also spoken about in Sunday school this morning. We have a choice depending on where we want to go. Most of the time you get to a stop sign. You can turn left or you can turn right or you can go straight ahead. And you make the choice of which way you want to go. But in this life there are two choices go to heaven or you can go to the unheaven or if y'all really want to know it's called hell hey. and those are the choices that you have and if you don't know Jesus and the part of your sins when you leave this earth or leave this world then there's only one place to go All right. that's Bible but if you know him he said, I go to prepare a place for you that I will receive you unto myself. So the doors are open. That being one today, we give you that opportunity. Well, there may be someone here today that don't have a church home and you would like Jackson Chapel to be your place of worship. We invite you now. You can come by letter, by Christian experience, or by a candidate of baptism. Have you come 
the, the doors are open. And they won. I don't know how God's gonna do it. And I don't know when it's gonna be set.
For we know that all things work together for the good. For those who love the Lord and are called according to his purpose. And I'm so glad to see these young folk here today. program today at 3 o'clock and uh, it will be uh, at Phillips it's by, you can be either on Zoom it's going to be on Zoom or in person so it's at Phillips today at uh, 3 p.m. that's the, the uh, laity council district laity uh, program so I'm going to pass that on and also uh, I made a challenge uh, you can it on I made a challenge on uh Hope you have enjoyed our service with Pastor David T. Young, and we'll see you next week at the same time. May God bless you.